in you go, says River, and the boy crawls into bed. He lies there in the dark, rigid and covered with a sheet. River smells smoky and sickly sweet and forbidden and not a bit like his mother. He sees the outline of her giant-sized breasts rising above him and is aware of the proximity of her bottom to his hand. He is afraid to move it. He experiences an acute physical stirring and as a consequence feels a flush of shamed blood to his face and he squeezes shut his eyes in anguish. That's right, sweetheart, close your eyes, she says, and the boy feels her hot, damp hand on his forehead and he, want, and he wants to cry so much that he secretly bites into his lower lip. Everything will be all right, says River, her voice slurred and booze modulated. Try to think of nice things, only nice things. Don't worry about your mummy. She will be fine now. She is in heaven with the angels. Everybody is happy there and they smile all the time and, and because they don't have to worry, worry anymore. They just float around and play and have fun and be happy. Bunny Jr. feels a suffocating heat emanating from River's body and he thinks he can hear her bones rolling inside her flesh. He feels sick with it. First she will meet St. Peter, and St. Peter is a beautiful, wise old man with a big beard, and he is the keeper of the gates of heaven. And when he sees your mummy coming, he will take out his big golden key and open up the door for her. Bunny Jr. feels the bed fall away, and a sudden darkness close on him, and he thinks he can hear his mother appear at the door and say, who is this person sitting next to you on the bed? Bunny Jr. will shrug his shoulders and say, I don't know, Mummy. And his mother will say, well, maybe we should tell her just to go away. And he will say, yeah, maybe we should just do that, Mum. Bunny Jr. smiles and tastes the salt of his blood and in time sleeps. <laughs>